Coach, thanks for joining us. Honored, pleasure to be able to sit down with you. I, I want to start by getting this out of the way. Your, your book, Fierce My Fight for Nothing Less. Why was it time to do this and, and walk me through the book? It, it took a while for me to uh, decide to write the book. It was a whole different story being told. I was actually the very first and the only uh, women's athletic director. And then you had someone who came behind me and decided that she was. And she was being hailed as the mother of women's athletics, you know, and, and that was really painful for me to hear. Yeah, that's not right. And, no, it wasn't. And I thought, okay, uh, it's time for me to write my story and what actually happened. I've always tried to be really positive about the things that Kansas, I love the university, I love this community, but to have someone uh, come behind me and decide to basically ride my curtail, you know, uh, it, it was definitely um, uh, disappointing and, and hurtful. When you uh, go to their uh, records, uh, my name is the only name that's there. And, you know, I, I really felt, okay, it's time. And uh, I also feel strongly that, you know, we have, a, we all want to leave a legacy and I want, you know, my great grands and those that will come after to be able to go, come to Kansas and visit this campus and know that their grandmother, great grand, um, had something to do with this wonderful athletic department that's being built for women's athletics now. When you were there, you didn't even have locker rooms. I, I think I think you said uh, you were doing your halftime stuff at, in a sectioned off portion of the restroom. Well, what, it wasn't even sectioned off. Um, the only thing in Allen Fieldhouse when I got started was the women's facility, bathroom facility. So if you were a fan, you had a place to go to the bathroom. That was it. So um, when I moved everything over there, for me at halftime for women's basketball, I had to use the women's facility. So basically uh, when I talk about or when it's written that you know walls were being built, truly walls were being built. I had to build a locker room. I had to build office space for our coaches. I had to have um, a uh, weight room built uh, and, and to tell you how all those things started out. People don't realize in my first group of uh, athletes, those women had to wear uniforms that were being worn by other sports. So you would have uh, the volleyball season and those uniforms would move down to basketball and then the basketball uniforms, same uniforms would move to uh, softball, you know, same yeah. uniform. You called yourself a, a builder. Coach Brandon called you a fighter. I, I think that those two are, are very good words to describe you. Uh, we, I could s sit here for half an hour just listing the accomplishments, but I, I, I want to know about the minute details. I, you were instrumental in Title IX, but you, you took zero scholarship program into 15. But then there's stuff like, you guys didn't have shoes to wear, so you went and you got a deal done so your players could get shoes. Yes. You, there wasn't a locker room, you, you made that happen. You're talking about fighting for time on, on the court. There's a story in here about the jackhammers going off during oh. your practice and you saying, no, <laughs> they know when yes. practices, yes. this can't happen. You went and talked to the chancellor and next practice, no jackhammers. Yes. Why was it important for you to fight? Well, because I had a vision uh, it was uh, as clear in my mind uh, today, yesterday, uh, I knew that all the things that the men had accomplished was amazing. The whole nation knew about the Jayhawks, you know? It wasn't just men's basketball, but track and field under uh, Coach Easton was very successful. But I always believed that there was room for women. And I also believe that uh, women were accomplished enough that they could bring, um, you know, excellence to our, our campus and uh, attention and positive attention. And, uh, you know, I just wanted that to happen for them. They deserved it. And I wasn't going to be deterred from that. So I, I needed to keep fighting so that they had those opportunities so that we could demonstrate that women could accomplish and could bring attention to this university in a positive way. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. Fierce, my, fart, my Fight for Nothing Less is available anywhere you can get a book right now. Well, Amazon and uh, Raven downtown here in Lawrence uh, has it, and Barnes and & Noble.
hopefully uh, we'll have some people that want to uh, go to those places and buy this book, yeah. you know. As they should. It's awesome. And, and like I said, we need to get you on an audio book. Okay. Co Coach, thank you for joining <laughs> us. Thank you, Landon, very much. She's one of those people where if she talks, she'll listen. Oh, absolutely. Okay, kind of the epitome of that. And That's uh, what um, I was doing just now. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and the forward and the afterward, uh, former Kansas governor Kathleen Sebelius oh wrote, wrote the forward, and then Lynette Woodard wrote the yeah. afterward. Wow. You got Don Staley on there as well, a bunch wow. of legends.